Hello guys, welcome to our channel Trent and Luke. This week we've come together with some of our friends to discuss the greatest LGBT moments of 2015. <sighs> oh my god, bro. So get ready to celebrate the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything homosexual. Now let the countdown begin! We kick things off at number 10. This boy band has been named one of the biggest and most successful boy bands of all time. Breaking records and breaking hearts. But one band member in particular has gotten his fair share in the spotlight this year. So in an interview, the interviewer asked Harry Styles and Liam what is their ideal, I think it was like, what was their ideal things they look for in a girl? Your favourite traits that you look for in a lady? Female. <coughs> it's a good trait. <laughs> Not that important. And he was like, not that important. Oh, he's so cute though. Can we talk about that for a minute? He's so cute. Now maybe he is genuinely confused. Who knows? Uh, but Harry, if you need, you know, to help kind of figure it out, call me. I have to say that I am probably the only person in this world that doesn't find Harry Styles attractive. I don't know what it is. I don't like it. I think it's really freaking awesome and he's so confident. There's been no member of a boy band that's come out during an active boy band. Oh, Harry Styles. If Harry Styles is actually gay, or bi, or pan, I don't know, there's a lot of sexualities that could incorporate him liking men. If he's into dudes in any capacity at all, I will join One Direction myself. I will find Zayn, cut off his face, put it on mine, and then be like, yo, I'm back. Now make out with me, Harry Styles. You know what, I think Harry's just a very open-minded and open-hearted person where I feel like he didn't really want to hurt anyone's feelings. Like, I'm a One Direction fan, but we're all crazy. Like, once we have our mind set on something, like Harry and Louis are lovers, like, we won't stop until they're actually lovers. I mean, I saw, I saw the rainbow mug in the Drag Me Down video. I'm not the only one that caught that. God bless that hair. We all love getting asked to prom. But this next proposal knocks all the others out the park. Coming in at number nine, here's Jacob and Anthony. Okay, I'm just gonna say I thought this was so flipping cute. This I loved. I absolutely love when this happened. And I, I like that it got the media attention that it did. So the straight friend taking their gay friend to prom, it's like every like gay man's dream. Cause you know that you've always had that one straight man crush. Uh, it reminded me of something that my straight best friend from high school may have done if we grew up in a different time, like a whole eight years earlier. So his straight friend did this whole thing at school, made this massive banner saying that I will take you to prom. Even though he's straight, he was just doing it for his friend. He held up a banner that says, you're hella gay and I'm hella straight, but you're like my brother, so be my date. Anybody would take Anthony to prom. Let me tell you, that boy is such a charmer. Oh, he's cute too. I'm gonna be entirely honest. I was jealous as fuck when I saw this on the news. That was my dream. That's what I always wanted to happen to me. Why didn't my straight friend take me to prom? It was huge. And you know what? I feel like it needed to be huge. I feel like because we're at the time in our lives, I think straight people are also embracing the fact that they're super comfortable, like being really close to gay people. And he just kind of showed like, hey, like I'm a straight guy, I'm comfortable in my sexuality, and I can still take my best friend who happens to be gay to prom. It's just such an inspiring story because like, you know what, they're just two friends going to prom together. That's all it is. Gay guys and straight guys can be friends. Sexuality doesn't matter to be friends. It doesn't matter. Hopefully we see more stories like this going viral all next year. What's that sound? Oh, it's just the weeping of thousands of gay men all over the world. It's Tom Daly at number eight. Hi guys, I'm Tom Daly, and apart from diving, I like getting married to people that aren't Philip Green. I'm angry. First of all, I just gotta say, hi Tom, if you're watching this, you are a fine, fine man. A fine man. Last year, Tom Daly came out to the whole internet on YouTube, and this year, he got engaged. Okay, Tom Daly, 
and Dustin Lance Black, I think, are adorable. Oh, what if they did a calendar together? Wouldn't that be amazing? Why am I not engaged to Tom Daly? I will never accept this, you know? The thing is, I still am holding out for the day that he realizes that he loves me. We're happy for them. I'm happy for yeah, them. Yeah, why I, not? I love them. They're a cute couple. Tom, if you're watching this, congrats, bro. Good for you. That's it. Invite me to your engagement party. I'm very happy for Dustin and Tom. Love wins. Except for me, I got divorced this year. Love doesn't always win! <laughs> Guess I'm happy for him. And by happy, I mean jealous as fuck. <laughs> Coming in at number seven is the one and only bigoted, frizzy haired Christian herself, Kim Davis. I have like very short, concise opinions about things. Oh, this is not a short, concise opinion. Kim Davis. Oh, Kimmy D. Kimmy, Kimmy D. Kim Davis refused to pass out a marriage, legal marriage license to a gay couple because of her religious beliefs. Okay, so this bitch Kim Davis was not on my radar, like at all. I heard about this woman not giving marriage licenses to people and then I was just like, oh, she a bitch. And then I tuned out. We have spent way too much time talking about this woman. Who is she? Where did you find her? Kim Davies. She's just like coming in here and demanding about everything to do with like sexual and like gay people. Kim Davis was quite horrifying in 2015. The next, they should base the next season of American Horror Story off Kim da American Horror Story Kim Davis. I, sh I would be screaming through that entire season, the scariest season yet. She got sent to prison for it, which is great. And then she got out and she's got this scene, right? It's like the funniest thing ever. <laughs> she comes out of the prison and she's like got her hands in the air and there's like Eye of the Tiger playing in the background. Oh God. Eye of the Tiger and like this priest next to her and she's like, <sighs> and all these like followers are like, Kim! She deserved to go to jail for what she did because you don't do your job. <laughs> Bye. Marriage equality is now the law of the land. And if you are an elected official like Kim Davis um, and you are unable to perform your job, then you just should quit. Kim Davis represents everything that is wrong with our great nation. I'm proud to be an American, but this crazy bitch. <laughs> She's a knob. Oh my goodness gracious. The threat to America is not same-sex marriage. It's Kim Davis's dead ends. Cut your hair. <laughs> Cut the hair. She just needs to like stop. Like you know when you, you know when people generally just need to stop? Kim Davis needs to stop. Kim Davis is trash next. From Beast at number seven to Beauty at number six. The Rose of the Rubies. Ruby fucking Rose. <laughs> Orange is the new black. Ruby Rose. Ruby Rose. She does identify as gender fluid, which, you know, your girl does too, so that's something we have in common. But another thing we have in common is we make people question their sexuality because, shoot. My dad finding out about what gender fluid meant, like, a month ago and he was just like mind boggled like it just didn't make sense to him that someone could not associate with a gender um, and I think it's really important when people who are like in the public eye someone like Ruby Rose comes out and says like I don't really need to put myself in a box between like male or female I mean she's hot on orange is the new black whichever gender she is at the moment she rocks it she is absolutely gorgeous I actually just watched her short film I thought it was stunning I'm gonna be one of those people who say I knew Ruby Rose before all you bitches, okay? She was famous in Australia. Uh, here we um, go. She's been around Australia for a while and this is her first big break into the rest of the world. But people went crazy over her. She did, she stole Piper and everything. And everything. Mark. All over Facebook, like everybody was just like, this is my crush. Like guys, girls, everybody was just like, I am in love with this girl. I really didn't understand the obsession with Ruby Rose until I found myself spending two hours lost in time just staring at Instagram pictures of her. I was like, oh, oh, I get it. Creeping in at number five is the big man himself, President Obama. Oh, what? I didn't know Barack Obama was in Out Magazine. So Barack Obama was the first president to be in the Out 100. Barack Obama, 
I am so grateful that Barack Obama has been my president for the last eight years, and I am so grateful for all of his contributions to my community. It's so amazing to see someone like the president or the president supporting and showing their support for all things within the LGBT community. I think it's just so amazing. I like Barack Obama. He can stay. Okay, so I will admit this was cool and I don't have anything snarky to say about it or anything sarcastic. It was just a cool thing to see, you know? I know Barack has done, you know, some things that are not good, but I also have seen him be visible about like Black Lives Matter and gay rights, even though he really kind of didn't support it or he didn't support it in the beginning. And then like was like, boom, 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 boom. You get marriage license, you get marriage license, you get marriage license. Fight for those people who don't have their rights, the rights are stolen, fight for those bitches, and then you know what? Don't an awesome magazine. Why not? He's leading them all. He's leading them all to victory. To the gay rainbow of gayness. <laughs> Isn't YouTube a great place to speak your mind and be yourself? Here at number four are some familiar faces you may recognize. 2015 was the year for YouTubers to come out. Joey Graceffa came out, Ingrid Nielsen came out, Shane Dawson came out. I am so grateful that these YouTubers with millions of following have told the world this is exactly who I am. They will save lives. It's so cool that we have a platform where we can communicate and talk to so many people and help so many people. And it takes a lot of courage to do that on the internet because there's a lot of trolls. There's probably some trolls watching this. Hi trolls. Yes, take the piss out of my hat. Yes, I am wearing a checkered shirt. Yes, I look like Boy George. I wish, growing up, that YouTube existed. Growing up in a small town, it's not easy, and you feel alone, and like there's no one else out there that you can relate to, that understands you. But like, Ingrid Nilsson's coming out video was so genuine, I watched that like five times, because every time I cried so much. We just wish that, growing up, I had access to videos like that. On behalf of the entire community, we appreciate it, and we thank you. And congrats to Joey, Shane, and Ingrid, and every other YouTuber that came out this year. I know that's a really big step, it's it's brave, and thank you for doing that, and we're happy to have you. We should make a coming out video. Isn't that kind of late to make a coming out video? I mean, we never said it. Speaking of coming out, here is Miley Cyrus taking the third spot. What's good, Miley? What's good, Miley? So a few years ago, Miley Cyrus had a massive transformation, um, came back with a whole new look, uh, new music, and this year, she has sort of come out, in a way. She kind of hasn't officially done like a, a YouTube video. You see, the thing that I love about Miley is that she's literally such a carefree person and she knows who she is. I love her. Miley just killed it. She said like, she's fine with anybody and everything as long as it's consenting, it's over the age of 18, and of course, it isn't like an animal. I am the biggest Miley Cyrus fan. I love everything about her. I love that she is fluid in her sexuality and that she is comfortable talking about being fluid in her sexuality. I just love seeing people in the public eye just changing the way people look at gender and love. Open-mindedness, it's just, we need more of it. That's awesome, but I think Miley Cyrus needs to work on her music or start Hannah Montana 2. And another thing she did this year which I was so honored to be a part of was her Happy Hippie Instapride campaign which happened all online, all over Instagram. I mean, you can say what you want about Miley, but she has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for LGBT groups. As far as I'm concerned, when you're doing that much good, you could wear whatever the hell you want, say whatever the hell you want. What's good, Miley? Just missing out on the number one spot is one of the biggest transformations this year. Caitlyn Jenner was a very, very, very big topic for this year. Here, Caitlyn, just dropping the bomb on the cover of Vanity Fair, made a new Twitter, called herself Caitlyn, could have started with the K, but she was like, nah, I'm gonna start it with the C, and I saw her. So for her to come out as a trans woman and be visible, and then on top of that, for her to make a speech at the ESPN award show about trans women, and not just trans women, but trans women of color especially, that 
was a huge moment. I definitely have mixed feelings about Caitlyn Jenner towards the end of the year. I do believe for the greater good, it is wonderful that she has come out. But she got a lot of support from everyone, um, even in the uh, straight allies and mm. people in the world. O obviously there's a lot of negative stuff as well from the bigots and all that stuff. But so much positivity came from it. Regardless of what people think about Caitlyn Jenner, she sparked a global conversation about the transgender movement and has brought so much attention and awareness to this issue. And I think that that's something that should be celebrated. I think Caitlyn has a lot of pressure on her when it comes to meeting all the expectations everyone has about what a trans role model should be. Maybe she's not ideal in every way, but I think that representation is still so important. But you know what? I feel that Caitlyn has a very big potential of being an amazing voice for the trans community as a whole and being an inspiration and a very, very, very big voice, you know, with the trans movement. Her show, I Am Kate, is great. I think that the fact that she chose to partner with E! for that show just doesn't make sense to me because I feel like the audience who watches E! needs constant drama. I mean, they watch Keeping Up With The Kardashians. How informative can you get? Didn't they have an episode where they showed how the Kardashians take selfies? I am going to make a musical about the Kardashians because they are crazy. And I think a musical version of their lives would be fantastic. Smashing the top spot here at number one is by far the biggest LGBT moment of the decade. Number one, can we get, I need some streamers or some shit. Woo! Love wins, bitches. Love wins. Woo! 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 Yay, gay people can get married. Yeah. That was probably the greatest thing that happened this year in 2015 in regards to LGBT. Finally, I can go and get married to someone. Every single person was husband hunting that day, making eye contact everywhere. Like, who, you want to you want to get married? Okay, you're first. You're next. This sounds really cliche, but you could just feel like feel the love, feel the happiness. That was just you know, people were just walking around. We we're like being gay, and it was okay. It is okay. It's always okay. Also, high five because being gay is totally a choice, and we tricked everybody. <laughs> I mean, the hashtag speaks for itself. Love wins. I'm so happy that everybody in the United States can get married and have the same rights that straight people do. And, you know, we fought long and hard for this. We're all free and we're all legal and we're all equal. Does that rhyme? So to be alive at this moment in history and just to witness this change that has occurred um, because of brave men and women who have fought for our rights to even just to get to this point, I'm, I feel very lucky. Not long after there was like Facebook supporting, they had these rainbow filters that you could put over your profile picture. I went onto my Facebook and all my straight friends um, had the gay rainbow flag on their yeah. profile picture. Yeah. It just shows that so many more people, everyone is supportive of yeah. gay marriage. It was supposed to be just like a, a filter, but it kind of said like, we support you. And if you didn't have it on your <laughs> Facebook, people would be like, why don't you have the filter on your Facebook? <laughs> yeah. Are you like against gay marriage or something? <laughs> you don't want to fight against those who are championing against love because love will win. I guarantee it. This is the best thing that could ever happen to gay people. Like the best thing! Did you ever think it would happen? I never thought in my lifetime that this would ever happen. It's really amazing. It's like winning, it's just winning, winning such a victory. I love you, I love you. So that's a wrap on this year's top 10 biggest moments. Comment below and let us know what your favorite LGBT moments were. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and check out all of our friends in this video. And until next year, that's bye from us. Thank you so much guys. Bye! To 2016! Oh, it's dripping everywhere. I better stop that. Exciting.